Hey there, it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and today I'm here to give you my August reading wrap up. In August I read 12 books and I'm here to tell you my thoughts on all of them today. Down in the description box below I will have content warnings for all of these books so definitely check that out if that's something you might need. But without further ado, let's get right down to the books. So I feel like lately I've been starting off my wrap ups with the books that I dislike the least. So I'm going to mix it up and start with one of my favourite books that I read this month. And that is The Stone Sky by M.K. Jemison. This is the third and final book in the Broken Earth trilogy, which is an Afrofuturism trilogy. And it's been my favourite trilogy for quite a while. The first book I gave five stars. The second book I gave five stars. And the third book is an all time new favourite, another five stars because N.K. Jemison is just that good, okay? She is just that good. I've said this before with the other books, but N.K. Jemison is the queen of world building and this one proves it all the more. I can't believe that you get to the third and final book in a trilogy and you're still learning new lore, you're still learning new things about the world and it doesn't feel too overwhelming and it's building from the foundation you've already created and been invited into with the first book. It's just masterful. But I did tell you what the whole series is about. So I'll start with the first book. It's about these characters who live in a world where origins exist and origins have the power to move and control and manipulate the earth and you think that these people would be the ones ruling on this earth but no they are the oppressed and they have seasons which are an apocalyptic situation where the world kind of revolts against everything and the fifth season starts and we follow some characters and what they do during this fifth season. That is all I can tell you, but it's fantastic. Each book is consistently wonderful and amazing, and this one is no different. Some of my favourite characters, you learn so much more about them in this one, and I was fascinated by that because I've been wanting answers for quite a while. So she really served in terms of giving some answers to things that you might not even have known you had questions to. And as for series finales, I can often find them quite disappointing because you're building towards a particular moment and either that moment often gets rushed over or is not as important as you think, but that is not the case here. The mounting tension was so high that when I got to the last 100 pages, I could do nothing but read even though I was on holiday with my family and it was just so fantastic to see it all accumulate and come together and once again N.K. Jemison did not disappoint it was a fascinating ending it gave me all of the thrills and the journey to get there was very very entertaining I don't know what more I can say I've praised this book from the first book onwards each one steady plot twists steady reveals amazing character development it's got LGBT plus characters it's got people of color characters Characters, got disabled characters, just oh, you need to read this series. Another book that I read and absolutely loved this month was Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Mercado and this is a short story collection of pretty much gothic lesbian short stories and I was so here for it. This was a five star read and new favourite. So with short story collections it can be really difficult to capture the atmosphere and the imagery into a short story while also making it feel complete even within its shortness and Carmen Maria Mercado definitely served that time and time again. Each story felt complete, each story felt unique and yet each story still carried that wonderful writing style, that wonderful building sense of gothic atmosphere that this author manages to bring to the table. What I really liked are her concepts. Each story just felt so unique and so haunting and different in very different ways, which I found absolutely fascinating. And even when I finished a short story, that would not be where my journey with the short story finished because I'd be left thinking about the short story and what it means and its imagery and its context long after I'd closed it and finished that particular story. So what can I say? I've definitely found a new favourite short story collection and I'm very much looking forward to reading more by this particular author. Another brilliant book I read this month was White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson and this is a young adult horror book and I've been seeing it getting quite mixed reviews and I do think I can understand why but I do think this book also needs a lot more love. So in this one we're following our main character who's part of a family that is just being united. Her mother is now with her stepdad and their whole family is moving to a new neighbourhood. However, when they get there, the area is quite run down and this house is big and huge. 
but it might not want them living there. And there's something going on in this area that seems quite mysterious and quite dark. And that's what this one is about. I love this book for several reasons. And the first one is the way that it depicted our main character. I was absolutely fascinated. I really liked her. I could see that she was struggling with her own demons and things that she had to face and overcome. But the way in which she kind of takes steps forwards and takes steps back felt very, very realistic. I also absolutely loved the love interest in this one. It's like the romance takes a back, back, back seat. This is a young adult horror and not a young adult contemporary but it still managed to create a secondary character who was absolutely lovely, unapologetically himself, but also had boundaries. And I feel like we often see the female characters having boundaries and things that they will not cross or change about themselves, but it was really nice to see that in the male secondary love interest as well. Another thing this book did so well was the horror element. It was creepy. It had the horror film, you know, elements that make something a bit scary, especially when it comes to the haunted, very sentient feeling house. I really liked how it handled that and I really liked how it mounted that tension. It was definitely an experience for me because I watch more horror than I read, but it was still very nice to see that in a book. I do think this book had some flaws, the first one being I really, really struggled with the depiction of the stepdad. As someone who knows parents who are divorced, Often they say they're very happy to find a new partner, to continue with things, but they will always put their children first. And if a step or new or co-parent treated children the way that this stepdad does, to a point where he knows he's, his child is wrong and he's still making huge, huge excuses for her, I just think the parent wouldn't accept that for their children and so I felt like the representation was a bit off here because I didn't believe the you know step and parent relationship and the way that they handled their children I don't think it would have worked I don't think they would have been able to get away with that much without the other parents saying something and the last thing is that I do have to admit that the ending was a bit rushed and there could have been more time given to the ending so that it could land more effectively because the build in this is fantastic so I would have liked to see that ending hit home all the more. But overall with this book I just had so much fun and sometimes that's all you want from a horror film. You want to be spooked, you want to be creeped and you want to have a good time and this book served me a good time. So as soon as I finished it I kind of like thought mm, this was just an okay book but the more that I thought back to it and how much I referenced it when talking to my sisters I realised that actually I enjoyed this a lot more than I expected. It also does something which I found very interesting where there was kind of a concept that was a part of the horror element. So it discusses gentrification and the effects of that and that ties into the horror and I really liked seeing how it was done here. I think it was done smoothly, I think it was done realistically and therefore this book needs a lot more love. I had been in the mood for gothic and thrillers. I know it's August, it wasn't autumn time yet, but that was what I was in the mood for, so I just read into it. So I read The Vacation by John Mars, and it satisfied me that I finished reading this one while on my own holiday. So it was a perfect tie-in for this book. So this is a thriller book where we follow these characters who all end up in the same hostel in America, and all of these characters have more to their past then you might see on the surface when they just meet all together in this hostel. On the cover it says sun, sea, sex and murder and I think that encapsulates this book quite well. I expected a lot, I've heard such good things about John Mars but reading this it wasn't the best and it's only when I read the thank yous and acknowledgements at the end that I realised that this was originally his first debut self-published thriller and he's written many books since then, so even though this was a recent release, it just got traditionally published, it was self-published before. And I think that's when I finally understood this book, because you can kind of tell it's a self-published, originally a self-published thriller, because the plot was so far-fetched. Like, I was looking into the distance to find the plot, and it was so far away from me that I almost couldn't believe it. The coincidences in this plot are so, so many. There's so many coincidences and there's so many things that I was just like, this wouldn't happen. They wouldn't all have such wild lives and be so dramatic. I just, it wasn't believable. I could not believe a single thing in this book. But when I suspended my disbelief, 
it was kind of a fun time. It was kind of over dramatic, over the top, wild, but absolutely hilarious. And I even had a ship at one point that I really wanted to see get together. So it was kind of dramatic, it was kind of too much, it was kind of off the grid, okay? But if you want to have a fun time reading a ridiculous thriller that is going to be a wild ride, then here you go. You should read The Vacation. It's truly not that bad. The way that I'm smiling while talking about this just goes to show how much fun I had, even if it was absolutely ridiculous at the same time. And it's got plenty of content warnings, so look for that down below. The endings were quite satisfying to all of the threads of storylines, because there's quite a few storyline threads. I didn't have a particular favourite story or a particular favourite character. It's not that kind of book. Will I read another John Mars? Yes, I do want to try some of his later published works that I think might be better. I felt like I've been reading a lot of fiction lately, so I decided to just pick up one quick non-fiction read, and that was Time Code of a Face by Ruth Zeki. I recently read The Book of Form and Emptiness and really enjoyed it, so I wanted to read something else of hers, and The Time Code of a Face was a good place to go to next. So in this one, we're following Ruth Zeki as she does an experiment where she looks at her face, for three hours straight in the mirror and that's all you do, nothing else and it's about what looking at her face tells her and she goes into her past a little bit and her history because of course your face often reminds of your parents and things that you've done and it was interesting. I learned a lot more about Ruth Ezeki than I knew before I picked up this book. Was it a particular favourite? No. Am I going to reread it? No. But was it a good way to spend an hour and a half I'd say because this is pretty short? Yes and I enjoyed it overall. Similar story goes for The Weight of Water by Sarah Crossan. I'd just been in the mood to read novels in verse, it's one of my favourite formats to read, so I decided to take it back to one of the authors who really brought the novel in verse format back into contemporary young adult. And so I read this one by Sarah Crossan, it's following this girl who is the daughter of two parents, she's Polish. When her father leaves to go to England without her mother, without telling them and just disappears, her mother decides that she's going to pack up her life and her daughter and go to the UK to try and find the dad. And it's about this girl who's feeling very displaced, she doesn't want to be in England, she misses Poland, and she finds solace in swimming in the swimming pool and a boy that she meets there. And while this was a very nice read and everything and it was lovely and it talked a bit about xenophobia and what it's like to be, you know, someone who's Polish living in the UK and some of the racism that she experiences, it still just felt like an okay story to me. It's not one that's left much of an impression. I have read other novels in verse that target the same age audience that deal with being a refugee or the racism you face from being from abroad deeper on a deeper level and a stronger level and that might be because those ones are own voices and this one is less so. It might be because of the writing style, it might be of different things but all in all I thought this was a decent read but it didn't go deep enough to really affect me strongly. Now we're going to a graphic novel and that is Oxygen Mask by Jason Reynolds and Jit With Art by Jason Griffin and if you're in the US you might know this book by a different title, something like It Ain't Burned Bright. I'll give the US cover here. So if you're in the UK and you want to read that book and you're not able to find it, it's because it's got a different title and a different cover and it's called Oxygen Mask. This is a graphic novel with an extended poem throughout it that talks about some of the things that people have had to deal with in 2020 and who are still feeling the effects of those things in 2020. So it goes into racism rooting from the murder of George Floyd and kind of the effects that that has had on the way that black people are treated since then. It goes into the pandemic and the effects it's had on people since then and it also talks about the rise in the attention around climate change and the effects that it's had, guess what, since then. And this was an absolutely amazing graphic novel and I really really loved it. And reading it, it did feel like a lot of the breath that I'd been holding in on these subjects and a lot of the emotions that I was feeling about these subjects was beautifully and wonderfully depicted in the artwork. And this is a graphic novel where there's more art than words, but it's just so powerful and so effective with those few images that I can't help but recommend it. And Jason Reynolds has written a poem that's kind of spread throughout the images and the words and the images combined just work in beautiful harmony. They're perfectly put together and the repetition as it goes through the different three sections in the poetry 
with the differences that depend on which section you're in it was just all artfully and masterfully done and I just really I really recommend it as something to give to teens and children who are struggling with some of the things that have been happening recently and trying to become accustomed with it but also to adults who kind of need that exhale that you haven't been getting. Jamaica Kincaid. So Jamaica Kincaid has got her works published in a new collection of editions by Picador. They look fantastic, so I started to read one of them, and that is At the Bottom of the River. And this is her collection of short stories. And these short stories mostly focus on girlhood, womanhood, a bit on racism, and they're all very, very well done. What I really like about this very short, so very quick read short story collection is that it almost reads like poetry. Her writing style in this is very poetical and that writing style carries throughout all of them. So they all have a certain sense of unity. They all have a certain sense of atmosphere, but the imagery and the subject matter is a little bit different for each one, but it's definitely the kind of short stories that are very, very short and almost like an extended prose poem. So just know that for style going in. But as someone who loves poetry, it was very much up my alley and I had a great time reading this. I finished a sequel and that is The Secret Speech by Tom Rob Smith. So I started this one back in May when I was on holiday with my best friend because this is the second book to my best friend's favourite thriller called Child 44. So if you would like a reading vlog where I talk about my thoughts on Child 44 and my best friend reads one of my favourite romance books, I'll leave a link to that vlog down below and up here. But yes, I read The Secret Speech and it was a very very good time. I don't think I can tell you the synopsis of this one because it is a direct sequel and it's linked to the first one but these are thrillers that are set in Stalinist Russia and this one is post-Stalinist times so it's kind of dealing with the reformation that's happening after that and the characters get caught up in that. We're following Leo once again who was our main character in the first one and so it's Leo and the people that he cares about and values that you get to know about in the first book and it has to do with someone who really wants revenge on him for some of his past crimes and that person really tries to target the ones that Leo loves and so it's all about that and I do have to say that this one felt a bit more far-fetched than Child 44. Child 44 was really grounded in realism and I could have really believed it happened whereas this one had a few more film-like moments or movie-like moments with action and such that you do have to suspend your disbelief a little bit for and at one point you think the book is going to end but it continues and it could have ended where I thought it was going to end but that said I've come to love Leo and I've come to love the characters that this book is all about and so seeing them develop and grow and struggle in this book was really harrowing as always with Tom Rob Smith he does not care about who you like and who you don't like he is willing to kill off characters with no notice and so my heart was absolutely broken when none of my favorite characters survived this book <laughs> you know that struggle. But it was still a very, very good read. It was very fascinating and it does a good job of kind of talking about some of the elements and things that happened in Russia when it was the post-Stalinist period and everything was changing and nobody had any certainty. So that was very fascinating. Ooh, I read The Silver Chain by Gion Shabani and I gave this one five stars. It was an absolute new favourite and probably going onto my list of favourite novels in verses in all time. So this is a young adult novel in verse and we're following our main character who is, I believe it's Iranian, she's half Iranian, half British. She's from a family that are struggling a bit financially but she has a scholarship to go to a very private and high class school. She really loves music and playing her violin and her mother is struggling with her mental health illness and it's kind of in the beginnings of her struggle with that mental health illness and our main character as a teenager is trying to deal with that. She's trying to fit into her family, trying to fit into this culture where she feels like she doesn't quite belong and also just trying to fit in at school where she's clearly more broke than the rest of her classmates but she still really loves them. And basically this novel in verse did everything correct. Everything. I really liked the writing style. It had brilliant rhythm to it all the way through and sometimes it had the occasional rhyme but it never felt forced and it was just such an easy 
flow to read. It was beautifully written. I loved all of the descriptions of our main character and how much she appreciated and found solace in and found a home in music. Whenever she's playing her violin or whenever those music notes, are, she's listening to them or playing them and creating them. The way that it was described really just captured my love for music, but also I think people who love classical music's love of music and it was just stunningly and beautifully written and encapsulated in words that I just couldn't help but feel a personal connection to this book. Another thing that I really liked was how it talked about the complexity of family, especially when mental health illness is involved and culture comes into it a bit too, but what I especially, especially just give this book all of the love for is how it dealt with the friendship struggles in this one. She's growing up, she wants to do certain things, she doesn't have enough money to do things the way her classmate does and she's going through a big emotional thing at home. Of course that means that with her friendship group it kind of fractures a little bit especially with her best friend and this closeness that she has and this new friend that has been introduced and kind of threatens her security and her friendship. And I do think that when it comes to two friends being a unit and someone else being thrown in the mix, the storyline tends to follow a very certain path that I see done quite a lot. What I liked is how this one handled it slightly differently but in a very heartwarming way and I can't really say more than that but I think it just did a fantastic job of talking about the friendship storyline that happens in this. This book also has some really beautiful illustrations in it that have to do with music and those illustrations are woven in all the way throughout the pages and it just added an extra layer of beauty to an already beautiful book and I can't recommend this one more. I read a graphic novel and that is M is for Monster by Talia Dutton and this was a fantastic graphic novel. It took me a while to warm up to it but I had a very very good time. So in this one it's kind of a Frankenstein retelling so we're following these two sisters who are scientists and one sister accidentally blows up the other in an experiment but she is a scientist so she takes all these pieces of her sister and she sews them up and thinks that she has been able to bring her sister back to life but what she doesn't know is that it's not truly her sister the being has a consciousness and it's not her sister's one it's an entirely different person and whenever this monster shall we say looks into the mirror she can see the ghost of the sister whose body she is inhabiting so you've got <laughs> quite a few elements there and I hope that made sense but we also have this constant threat that if one sister recognizes that the monster is not truly her sister's consciousness she wants to take the monster apart and try again but the monster wants to exist so that's what's going on I know that was quite a mouthful but it's a really really good really good Frankenstein retelling it deals with some of the similar themes that you see in Frankenstein. The concept of beauty, the concept of identity, the concept of wanting to be loved as you are rather than a projection of what the creator has put on you. But at the same time, it adds something new to the mix, which is this very tight sister relationship and also this element of grief because one of them is actually not there anymore and they have to come to terms with the fact that maybe your sister won't be coming back. And it just was a beautiful, beautiful portrayal of sisterhood and identity and acceptance and loving yourself that was wrapped up in a very gothic feeling graphic novel. The colour palette in this one is all greeny, bluey style, very Frankenstein-esque and the artwork is quite straightforward but it matches the story very well and by the end of it I was just feeling a little bit, a little bit emotional. A little bit. And then last but not least I want to talk about The Trenches by Parker Bilal and this is a urban London set thriller, thriller book, a mystery thriller book and this is actually the third one in a series I believe so I just jumped in here, I was reading this one for work so I just jumped into the series here and it was a good time but it's not something I'm going to remember in the long term and it's not a favourite book. I don't even want to tell you too much about the synopsis because it has to do with the other books I haven't read them so I can't even give you a synopsis of the first one but in this particular one we're following uh, this detective as he tries to find a missing person and at the same time a murder has occurred and then you've got the police kind of investigating that murder and these two cases are linked and it's also linked to a long term running mystery that the detective has been trying to work on since the first book. So you've kind of got three overarching mysteries all weaving together in this one. And so of course the longer spanning one I didn't have much of a clue on even though it does clue you into some of the main details. 
I just accepted. I couldn't understand that bit as I was diving into the middle of a series. But in terms of the other ones, I thought it was very interesting to see how it all came together. And I love that this one had so much representation in it. Our main character is black and also we've got some like lesbian police detectives, we've got some detectives who work independently, so outside of the police force, and some who work in police procedural settings and you can see how the ways that they handle crime and the obligations of what they have to talk about differs depending on which units they are in, which I thought was interesting. But overall, it was a good time, but not one that's going to stick in my mind and I won't be going back to read the rest of the series. So there you have it. Those are all of the things that I read in August. Please let me know in the comment section down below, have you read any of these books? What was your favourite read in August? Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video. And you know what they say, onwards and upwards. Excelsior!